Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab. Um, today we're going to finish up the cheap TIG welder series. Uh, I'm a little overdue on that, so we're going to get it done. Uh, overall, I'm going to switch it down. So overall, I'm pretty happy with that machine so far. Uh, it, it's worked real well for $350. Um, it's the Sumadre $350 TIG machine. <laughs> so it's a, it's a review. It, it's DC only. It has a high frequency start. It's a torch trigger. Um, it has high it has a high frequency pulse and it has like a low duty cycle pulse. Um, and then it has just like straight current. Uh, so I think that the um, pulse is pretty cool. Uh, the the high, high frequency I think is, I, I like the most. Uh, the low frequency is almost like, you know, at that point where you have to just ignore that it's happening and try to weld regularly and it kind of messes with you just because of the way the strobe affects. Um, the high the high frequency pulse is pretty good. Um, it, it limits the heat that goes into the part and uh, that, that's the only time I'd really use it uh, if I was concerned about, you know, uh, how much I wanted to penetrate a weld or if I was worried about blowing out a weld. Um, I, I would, you know, flip that on. Otherwise, it just goes straight current. It seems to work pretty well there. Uh, I haven't been able to durability test the machine because, you know, it take me a year to do that, really, just leaning on it to see how, you know, how it's going to do. And that wasn't really the intent of the video. The video is just to get the cheap machine, check it out. Does it do what it's supposed to do? Yes or no? And then fill you all in. So if you want to go that route, you can. Um, it's actually pretty good. So I, I saw one on, on Harbor Freight. Uh, yesterday I think it was and it was um, it was like a hundred bucks more maybe it was 50 bucks more than this machine and it didn't have the uh, it didn't have the pulse features but it did have a foot pedal now I'm not sure how well it works or don't work uh, it doesn't work maybe that's one we'll try in the future uh, but um, but this machine's been pretty good I, I think I'll, I'll stick with uh, you know um, my, my analysis that I did in the last video uh, and I got some stuff to weld today, so uh, here's some stuff that I'm just I, I pulled out and got cleaned up. Uh, it's ready to weld. Stuff that you do just to so get some TIG shots. I think I made a pretty decent jig for uh, for getting those TIG shots out. We'll see how well it works or not. If there's lots of TIG shots when I finish this video, then you'll know it worked well. And if there's none, then well, it didn't work so great. So we got some stainless steel uh, tubes here. I've already ran this and uh, basically just like this and it, it did pretty good but it was a learning curve on that you know learn how to do it I got some 3 8 still here um, some more 3 8 some 16 gauge mild still we're gonna do this uh, is mild still so we're gonna do one of these in mild still and one of these guys in uh, stainless steel to see how it works and then I got some uh, 125 wall or some eighth inch plates probably 10 or 11 gauge uh, mild still we'll probably just just weld that guy like that and then weld one of these guys on here like so and then maybe some 16 gauge to some one uh, some 3 8 that'd be like simulating welding tube onto like a turbo flange or something like that and then we got some shiny stainless steel uh, mirror finish stuff we'll probably do like uh, probably do like a, a one one like that, or one one like that. So, um, see how that does. And then, look, what is that? You said, Mike, you said this machine was DC only. Um, I got some aluminum here. Some one eighth inch, I think they're both one eighth inch, it looks like. Aluminum pipe and some aluminum plate. It's just, all this is just drop, the stuff that's fell off. Um, but I've heard, I've heard that you could weld aluminum on DC. Uh, that it's um, now I, I also heard that you're supposed to use helium for that and I don't have any helium because it's crazy expensive and I don't have the money as you can tell by most of the tools in my shop so we're gonna go ahead and give that aluminum a shot and see what happens so I'll be doing it with uh, direct current um, <laughs> I'll probably change I'll probably change off the tungsten. I have thorium in there right now and uh, it doesn't do well on AC uh, on, on AC DC welding, um, so it probably uh, on AC welding it probably wouldn't do well. But I don't know. It'd be the first time I tried it, and uh, we'll see how it works. Um, 
And after we get done welding all this stuff out, we'll kind of look at some of the welds and throw up some arc shots. And then we'll do a final review of the machine. And it'll be ready to go. So hang in. Okay, so here's where it goes really bad. And the audio is atrocious. Like, um, I know I need to get a mic and work on that. So you don't want to kill yourself while you're watching these videos. But bear with me. So I had to delete all the sound out because it was it was like a robot guy. Um, so here's the torch. One thing I found with the torch is that you can turn it. Um, and what that does is it fits your hand a little bit better. So you can kind of tilt it to you where your your finger is to turn it on and off so if that you know wherever you want to hold it um, just by twisting the head of that torch in there you can uh, you know make it a little more accessible for that on and off switch and uh, I have it set up right now where you push and you hold and it stays on when you let go it it, it like you know it stops and then you can set it up to another position so you push it once and it stays on until you tap it again and uh, that could be useful but um, that, that seems to work good so give it a little tweak of the torch um, it's massive torch but you know hey uh, any little thing that makes it a little bit better so what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of this is just me tacking up some stuff I'm going to weld some stuff out I'm just going to kind of cut it up and run through some of the highlights uh, of the arc shots to turn these you know massive amount of video into just some short uh, digestible bits so thanks stick with me we'll get through this so this is just welding out these pieces um, whenever you're doing small parts it's probably a useful uh, thing is to actually hold them down in place you know try to clamp them down hold them with something heavy uh, just trying to bang these videos out and get done with this project um, I didn't do a really good job of that I just kind of slam and stuff out so it's just a good idea ABCs always be comfortable when you're welding so here I'm putting a tab on the some 1 8 on some uh, 3 8 and you'll see I use this little pony clamp uh, just to hold it upright. And they work really good for that. They, they have kind of a natural V to it. So they're handy to have on, on, you know, around when you're doing stuff, you know. And you see I'm using a number seven gas lens is I think what I had on there. Um, and here I'm going to do kind of a 16 gauge tube to a 3 8 inch flange and um, you'll see here in a second I swap out uh, to a monster nozzle I'm just getting it tacked on always good idea to, to get your tacks you know have a really good fit up everything should be flush have good good tacks and so here I switched over to the uh, to number 16 monster nozzle uh, which I don't consider cheating <laughs> I uh, throwing that in with the kit so not a big deal but my, my main idea here was I just wanted to have a chance to try to really extend out that tungsten and and get my hand out of the way uh, so here I'm really welding very uncomfortably really far back when I usually kind of get up real close to the part um, but that's so you can get that shot right there you can kind of get an idea of how fast I'm feeding So here is the uh, tube. I'm going to run a bead around the mild 16 gauge tube first and uh, then we'll do the stainless steel. So um, fit up is important when you're doing uh, anything. So um, I, I, I hit mine on a belt sander and then deburr them so they're nice and flat, get good fit up. Uh, you can usually just tack them up. <clears throat> just by themselves just you know get some good fit up get them nice and close zap it uh, with some amps maybe a little higher than, than what you might normally use and it'll just fuse together um, it's usually good to get four tacks in you know opposing corners 90 degrees each and uh, 
once that happens, you just go for it. So I'm not doing anything um, special here. Uh, it's probably the machine saying it's 35 amps, which I think the machine's reading a little bit off. Um, but it's no big deal. It's just whatever we get used to. I think that uh, I would take and write down the settings that I use since it's kind of a, a, a first time go with this setup, the torch uh, switch. Um, you need to be on when you get going. So I think if I was, uh, you know, keeping this machine, I, I'd probably grab a piece of paper and just start writing down uh, settings that I like. So uh, next time, you know, I go to use it, I just zap it. And uh, another thing is it's nice with the, uh, with the, um, the slope down, uh, it, it avoids cratering. So you just add a little slope down at the end and it'll do fine. So I didn't do any heat control with the stainless either. I just ran the speed all the way around. I didn't back purge it and it still turned out pretty nice. So here we uh, are going to start welding the aluminum. You can't use those monster nozzles. Uh, they have some kind of screen insert to help diffuse the, the argon and the amps that we need to punch through aluminum. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I doubt they'd hold up. They'd probably melt that screen. Some of them have little uh, scotch bright biscuits inside. Um, and, and same thing. It would just melt that stuff out. So. We swapped over to just a number seven gas lens, and we're going to use a uh, three thirty seconds uh, filler rod, nice fat chubby filler rod. Um, on most of my stuff, I do with my AC, my nice machine. I'll use uh, one sixteenth for pretty much everything. But uh, you'll see in the video uh, how much we're feeding this, and uh, this is my first time. Um, so we're on straight argon. Uh, it's at about 180 amps. Um, I, I kind of settled on 170. I tried 160 and 170. You're seeing me doing all this, you know, firsthand. Uh, this is the first time go. So you'll see this uh, fillet weld where I weld this um, pipe onto this plate. It, it's not that good. <laughs> So uh, it is kind of an odd thing welding, you know, you, you'll, you hit it with a torch and you watch and it'll, you'll, you'll see it get hot and, but nothing really changes. So when you're welding with AC, um, you have it, the, the AC does its cleaning action and it kind of burns off the top film and then you'll see it get shiny and wet. Um, this didn't do that. It, you know, you just put heat into it, um, so there was no point where you, you could actually, you know, know when to put the, the, the filler in there, so you basically just get it hot where you know in your mind that, hey, this is, this is it should be melted, and then you just shove that, that filler rod into there, and uh, I probably should have ran through this once or twice before doing a video of it, and I think I could have done a better job. Um, at it but you know it is what it is and I think it was fun to do it you know kind of a first time try on on camera and so here it was I, I did the fill it well around this pipe here and it went okay there was a couple spots that were a little rough and you'll you'll see me spin it around and look and I'll be like oh yeah that's horrible so I went back and shoved some filler in there and shoved some more filler right in there and uh, we'll see so um, I think it's a good test to see if it holds water. So now I've swapped out to a, a regular speed. This is actual 100% speed, uh, real time video. And I did this because at this point I kind of got the fill for it. And you'll see it just looks a lot better. It still looks like ass, but it looks a lot better. And uh, you can see kind of how fast that rod's going in there. And I just wanted to show that. Um, as I was making that, you know, joining that joint that, you know, literally I was just pumping uh, rod in there is pretty much as fast as I could go and moving the torch as fast as I could go. I didn't notice at the time, but you can look and see I kind of got a little bit of uh, 
kind of maybe a woodpecker stop and uh, a pause and dip kind of uh, kind of uh, rhythm going on there and uh, that seemed to work out pretty well so you know it, we'll, we'll see how it, it holds up here in one second 82 all right will it hold water i doubt it <laughs> <laughs> but we'll find out fancy fancy welding lens rig so if it's leaking right now it's probably so hot that it's evaporating out <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to see it anyway but kinda Like it's holding water. Ow. Oh, ooh, that got hot quick, son. So that's pretty impressive. Ow, everything is really hot, and I have bare hands. So um, we're just gonna let that sit and see if we see any water leaking out of it. And in the meantime, we're gonna review the rest of the stuff we did. So, um, like a lug, like a little lug weld. Got going on, yeah. And that turned out real nice. Um, you know, I'd roll both sides of it if I was something that was supposed to be holding something. And then we got our simulated flange to tube, like header turbo. And that turned out pretty good. And that turned out well. Thank you very much. So uh, this is one eighth to one eighth. It's either ten or eleven gauge. Looks like ten gauge. It's probably like one thirty something. Uh, this was the first one we did, so we we're messing around with the heats. Um, a little bit of undercut from a little too much heat, but that's all right. Cause no one gives a fuck. And then we got our mild still. You can. Look in there. I mean, it penetrated all the way through relatively nicely. Um, and it's just a matter of, it's kind of, kind of difficult to get the heat right. But once you get it, it's not too terribly bad. I actually practiced with this guy a little bit. And you can kind of see the iterations of what happened. It's like this weld here. Focused. Can't ever tell. So this weld here was kind of my practice weld and I was trying the pulse on it and everything. Um, I had the, uh, I didn't have the down slope on so you can see like there's little, little, you know, you get the butthole here and there. Um, then I kind of got it figured out and got the, uh, you know, the settings dialed in, the technique dialed in um, and, and this, it here is with uh, 035 wire, so really thin, the same stuff that might go in like a MIG machine. And then this guy here was the, with the, um, was with 116 fill wire, and, and it, it was pretty, pretty good. And then over here you can see this is, this guy here is just, um, just, uh, an autogenous weld, just, you know, uh, run, running the, the, the TIG machine over it, and then these guys were some some filler. And, and like I said, I didn't I didn't back purge these. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it penetrated fine. Where it, where it, you know I got the technique down, um, it penetrated fine. If it was back purged, it would have looked it would have looked nice. Um, and and I did nothing to try to control the heat on the stainless. I just uh, blasted it. Oh, you know, I forgot to do the little stainless plate, but that's all right, because it's going to be the same as this, um, you know. And then, yeah, so this is the stainless we did today, and you see it, it kind of processes is a little better, and you just get used to it more. Focus. 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 
So, um, just, uh, you know, how you get used to it. And, uh, you know, it penetrated just fine. And if it was back purged, it would have been fine. But what's really impressive is this aluminum, you know. Uh, it really, it really is holding water. So that's a, that's a good test. I was listening to the Welling Tips and Tricks podcast, and they said that that's a good test to give somebody to see if they know how to fucking weld. It's just uh, give them a piece of tube and a piece of sheet and say weld that down and uh, make it hold water. And if you know how to weld, you can do that. And if you don't, then maybe not so much. Um, but welding aluminum on... Can you see this? So welding aluminum on straight DC with argon only. Um, that shit. That shit looks pretty good. It's holding water. And I don't think it's just the water's burning off. And you can see that it, <laughs> it penetrated probably too good. <laughs> Way too much. Uh, this one was a little bit better. Like I said, I kind of felt the rhythm on this guy a little bit. Let's hit it with the brush and see what happens. So, I mean, it looks exactly, exactly kind of like I think you'd expect. It's just that, you know, you get that oxide film. It didn't, it just kind of sits on there. And, and really, you, you could, it, it, it feels like you're pushing something in there. And uh, it's not horrible. I mean, some of this is horrible. You can tell I got really horrible there. And I'm really kind of surprised that this thing holds water, but it, it does care to. We'll try one more time. And hey, look at that. I don't see any, any leakage going on there, so. I'm sure, no doubt, it should be nice and cool now that I've filled up with water a couple times. Yay! Ow! So mostly cool. <laughs> so, now let's go throw it in the vise and see what happens. Do -do -do. I don't need my reading glasses no more. So we'll throw it in the vise to try to bend it, see if it just breaks loose or if it actually has some power, some uh, holding capabilities. Okay, let's set this up so you guys can see these guys. Can you see? The fuck am I looking at up here? Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, so this is just what we took off. And we're just gonna throw this in here in my glass. Oh yeah, it is pretty fucking strong. <clears throat> so look at that. Look at that. With that, it held, and it's watertight. It's amazing. Let's try to fucking knock this thing off. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Because the table's gonna want to bounce the whole fucking place. <laughs> Check out this. We got this specialty. This specialty camera holding machine right now. For holding the camera at any height, at any angle. Man, this might be my new favorite. My new favorite fucking 
filming machine. Holy thingy. It ripped, but yeah, it ripped at the toe of the weld there. So I mean, but that took a lot of force. It's not too bad. So the answer is yes, you can weld aluminum, and no, it's not going to be pretty at all. Which is kind of great because if you think about it, that way you don't have to get good at welding aluminum because it's really hard to get good at welding aluminum like Derek Wilder and Aldo Welds and all those guys that are actually excellent at it. You could just do it on DC and be like, oh yeah, I always lay times, but I don't have AC, so it just looks shitty. So I think that's a good deal. I might start doing that from now on. Maybe. Who knows? Okay, so... um. My final verdict is I like the machine. I think for 350 bucks, you know, and I already covered the cost. So look at one of those episodes. Uh, I think it was the cost of, of the TIG welder. Um, and it'll tell you, you know, what the actual cost is. But if you got an argon bottle or you can get, you know, your argon for cheap, that was the biggest secondary expense in there. Um, so I think it's a, Pretty good machine for for what it is. I I, I don't like the fact that it, it doesn't have a foot pedal. Um, I bought a foot, I bought two foot pedals, and neither one of them work. So I, I think that if you were a person that had um, some monicum of of intellectual power when it came to electronics and figuring out electronics that you could probably, you know, figure out where to put what or repin that, that thing and, uh, and you'd be good to go. Um, in which case I would love the machine. If it had a foot pedal, uh, it, it had all the features it has, the down slope, the pulse, the, the torch trigger, um, I would be a, a big fan of it. So the torch, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the big plastic torch, uh, but it's not the worst thing ever. So. For the money, I, I don't know. I think it'd be pretty hard to beat that. Uh, this Madre TIG 200P, as in Papa. Because um, you get pretty much any thickness, you know, still. And um, as we just saw, you could you could do aluminum. If I had a race car, like I said before, if I, had a, if I was rich and I had a race car and I was rich and I had a trailer, and I needed a machine that could hook up to a generator and uh, and and make trackside repairs. You know, this would be this would be a pretty good um, budget machine for that. Uh, you know, you, you could fix pretty much whatever you needed to. Um, so, anyway, I like the machine. Uh, it gets it gets like uh, uh, let's let's do a star system. Let's do. No, let's do a monkey system. I like that better. Let's do a banana system. See the evolution of my thought? Scary. So, um, so we'll go like 10 bananas making the monkey the happiest. We're going to say this is like a, uh, a 6.5 on the banana scale. Definitely a 6.5 because it, it, you know, it, it, it's not. And, and that being said too, this isn't the machine that I would buy if I was like, hoping to make a living off of welding um, this is a backup machine or a hobbyist machine you know if you have to depend on your equipment every day you know you don't buy you don't buy Chinese shit you know that's that's just the way it is um, but you know if it's what you need to do is a stepping stone to, to learn uh, then that's what you do you know it, it, you have to be smart with that so six point I'm gonna do a raffle for this and the raffle all the money going uh, to the raffle received by the raffle is going to get donated to uh, a, a, a charity here in um, Houston uh, called Camp Hope which is a, a, a it is a organization that's staffed with veterans um, it's for veterans it, it works with uh, veterans that have gotten themselves in a bad situation or, or having issues um, with PTSD, uh, it, it, you know, 
whatever. Um, it, it's there to help those guys out, and that's near and dear to my heart. And I'm all about uh, about America and and helping out soldiers. So I love the fact that we're going to raffle off a Chinese machine um, to help soldiers. That makes me makes me laugh. Uh, I'm going to donate everything I got into it too. So it's not. I just want to be clear about that. I'm not going to be like, oh well, I spent you know 600 bucks and um and i'm gonna skim that off the top and then give a check for whatever so um we're gonna set a date um i'll do a little facebook uh ad um like post i guess or whatever on my facebook page um on the monkey fab uh page and it'll have like the specifics we'll, we'll pick a date um <laughs> but i don't want things to go on just you know an undetermined amount of time and, uh, you know, not know what the fuck's going on. You bought a raffle ticket and you want your shit. So we'll probably set like a limit, probably say like, uh, you know, a couple weeks. Um, and, and I'll set a goal, you know, I like to sell X amount of numbers, but at the end of that, you know, two weeks, then we'll just, um, you know, pull the trigger on it and, you know, win, lose or draw, whatever's there will we'll be donated. Um, so that's how that's going to roll. What's going to go with the raffle? You may want to ask. So, um, not the cord, because if, if you would plug it in the wall and my wiring job went awry and you burnt your house down, then I don't want you coming back and saying, well, that's, that's how Mike at Monkey Fab sent it to me. Um, cause Mike's an idiot. He doesn't know anything about electrical or else he'd have his foot pedal working. So, um, uh, it's not going to come with a foot pedal or a uh, foot pedal with a cord. It's going to come just like it came to me, um, with just the wires free. I'll throw the cord in there. Um, and you can wire it up however the fuck you want to, but uh, it's going to come stock how it came from. Throw the cord in there. Um, you can wire it back up however you see fit, however you determine is the best way to do that. Um, it's going to come with uh, everything that came with the machine. So you'll get the uh, you know the grounds, the the, the stuff, the leads, um, all that, and it's going to come with. Uh, I'm going to get the monster nozzle that I bought for it. Uh, I bought a stubby gas lens kit from Jody uh, at, over at Weldmonger. Goodies. So you get a monster number 16 kit, which these are like, I don't know, like 50 bucks or something. Don't quote me. I, I don't know, but uh, they're something. They're not cheap. And then you're going to get these cool little clamp thingy that this is uh, a bot from Jody. See right here, man, that's $171 worth of stuff, right? So uh, you get this little clamp dilly that's great because it's magnetic and you can use it to weld it. Shit, that's a good thing. And then you get this bitchin' TIG finger. Pow! And an extra large TIG finger. And then you get all of 2015 four disc bonus sets of Jody's um, welding video so you can learn how to weld. And this bitchin', ooh, this is nice, man. Right, so you don't get this. I'm going to keep this because it's an actual vinyl sticker. It's better than the old ones you used to have that would fade. I'm going to actually stick that on my car. So you don't get that. <laughs> and you get this bonus, the Jody sandwich. I don't know what it is, man. It just says bonus. Who knows what could be in here? I'm not even going to look at it. We'll just throw that in there. And then you get this sweet um, welding set. I don't want to tip it too far, but it comes with all the comes with tungstens and uh, cat back caps and different size gas lenses and that. So, so with it. So um, thanks for following along. I, I know I've had a lot. It's been a long uh, learning curve. I've learned that I probably need to keep my videos a lot shorter and that I have a tendency to ramble on and that the audio is bad. Um, but that's part of learning. It's just learning all this shit. So, you know, bear with me. I'm doing the best I can. I appreciate you guys. 
Um, I appreciate everybody that you know checks out my stuff and, and you know takes time to look at my products and buy my, buys my products. Uh, you know that helps put food on the family's table, and uh, so that that's that's a good thing. But I also enjoy giving back. So hopefully this will be something we can all do to to give back to the vets um, that serve for us. So check out the Monkey Fab uh, website or the Facebook page. It's um you know facebook.com slash monkey fab and uh, we'll have all the details on the raffle there and I'll probably post it up on a couple of the websites that will you know, whoever will let me do it without you know getting the ass that you know someone's posting something up on their, their page. Um, and I sponsor a few pages so they're just gonna have to suffer it. Besides I'm, I'm sure they don't mind. So that's it. So thanks for joining in. Uh, I hope I'm uh,